Okay, now we're ready to start talking about compressibility. So what this means is how much a substance's density changes in response to an applied force. So if we have some differential element with specific volume, and we apply some pressure so that now the volume becomes smaller, the mathematical convenience will write this as V plus V or V will be negative, and the pressure is now P plus VP. The compressibility tau is defined as negative 1 over V V V P. So this doesn't really tell us quite enough. It lacks detail. So the process affects the compressibility. So we have an isothermal tau T, constant temperature, which is negative 1 over V dV dP at constant temperature. And we also have an isentropic tau S, entropy is constant, negative 1 over V dV dP at S. Since the specific volume is just the inverse of density, then we can also write this compressibility as 1 over the density times the rho dp. So that d rho is rho tau dp. So in general, gases have large values of this compressibility tau, while liquids have a small value. However, even for gases, if the flow is slow enough, in some sense, then the changes in pressure with respect to the base level of pressure are much smaller than one. And so, the changes in density are much smaller than one. And this is how we arrive at the term of incompressible flow, even if we're dealing with a compressible fluid like air. So the most useful parameter to assess the compressibility of flow is the Mach number, which is just the velocity non-dimensionalized by the speed of sound at a in a given location. So this is a local sound speed. Normally we use Mach number smaller than or equal to 3 to be able to assume incompressible flow. Let's take a minute and see why. Why isn't it Mach 0.25 or 0.32? Okay, uh, next time we'll review total and stagnation conditions. And what we'll see is that the stagnation temperature to static temperature ratio is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times the Mach number squared. But for now, just accept that this is true. <laughs> As I said, we'll, we'll show this next time. So then for an isentropic flow, PT over P is TT over T to the gamma over gamma minus 1. So we can substitute the above expression in here. And we could write this as the stagnation pressure is equal to the static pressure times 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 Mach number squared to the power of gamma over gamma minus 1. Now if we set up a Taylor series expansion 
which hopefully you remember from calculus. Expanding about Mach number equal to zero. Just to help you remember what the Taylor series expansion is, that's the f of x and the expansion about a is f of a plus f prime of a over one factorial times x minus a plus f prime prime of a over two factorial times x minus a squared and onward to infinity. So from this equation, if we take our f of m to be 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared all to the power of gamma over gamma minus 1, and we expand about m equals 0 or a equals 0 if we're using the nomenclature from up here, um, then what we can say is that, okay, well f of 0 is 1 prime of m is gamma over gamma minus 1 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared gamma over gamma minus 1 minus 1 gamma minus 1 over 2 2 m and simplifying that we get gamma m1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared 1 over gamma minus 1 and if we put in that the expansion point is m equals 0 it's actually it's just equal to 0 see because of the leading mock number term okay let's continue on f prime prime of m is 2 gamma over 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared gamma over gamma minus 1 2 plus gamma plus 1 m squared all over 2 plus gamma minus 1 m squared all squared and if we put in m equals 0 into this, we get 2 gamma times 1 times 2 over 4, which is just gamma. And similarly, if we go to the third derivative at 0, the fourth derivative, 3 gamma. So we can write that Pt stagnation pressure is equal to the static pressure times 1 plus gamma over 2 m squared plus gamma over 8 m to the 4 and continuing on and if we express the Mach number in terms of the velocity and you recall from your third year fluids the speed of sound can be written for an ideal gas as the square root of gamma RT. Then m squared is v squared over gamma RT. Then we can write that PT is P times 1 plus 1 half v squared over RT plus one eighth v to the fourth over rt squared plus continuing on but using the ideal gas law p is rho rt so rt is just p over rho so then we get that pt is p times one plus one over two rho over p v squared plus 1 over 8 rho squared over p squared times v to the 4 and again continuing on now if we only keep the first two terms we see that pt 
is approximately p times 1 plus 1 half rho over p p squared. And if we carry out the expansion, we get the stagnation pressure is approximately the static pressure plus 1 half rho v squared, which is Bernoulli's equation. So now all of a sudden there's no magic wondering of where Bernoulli's equation comes from. It's just the Taylor series expansion of the definition of the stagnation to static pressure ratio in terms of Mach number. So under what conditions is this a good approximation? Basically what we need is this next term to be negligible. So we need gamma over four, or sorry, gamma over eight, Mach number to the fourth, to be small compared to gamma over 2m squared. So what that means is that gamma squared over 4 must be much smaller than 1, taking the ratio of these. If we look at m equals 0.3, m squared over 4 is about 0 0.02. So ultimately this exact value of 0.3 is arbitrary. Um, but basically you're not, in, you're introducing no more than a 2% error in, uh, the stagnation pressure, uh, as long as the Mach number is below 0.3, is what this says. Now there's other ways of arriving at the M equals 0.3 limit, um, but this is a way is useful because it shows how Bernoulli's equation is obtained. But if you look in Anderson, in section 8.5, there's an alternative way of getting to the same criteria, which is also interesting to look at. We'll leave it there for now, and next time we'll continue on looking at how compressibility affects aerodynamics.